In this video, we're going to learn about logarithms, what logarithms mean, and what we see when we graph a logarithmic function. Now say we're given a value of 2 and we raise it to the third power. What that means is that we're going to be multiplying a value 2 times 2 times 2. We multiply 2 three times to get us a value of 8. We can think of this conceptually. We can think of a letter B. If we raise it to the y power, it would give us a value of x. Now what happens if we have that value of 2? We raise it to the y power, and then we say that that value is equal to 8. That means we would have to figure out how many 2's do we multiply this by to get a value of y. Well, we know that that would be 3 times. We use something called a logarithmic function to help denote how to figure out that value of y. So we would say log 2, which stands for the base, meaning the number that we're multiplying by each time. We would write down the number that we would be getting for our answer, and we would say that's how many iterations that we're going to have. So log of 8 base 2 would tell us it's 3, meaning that it takes us 3 times to multiply 2 to get a value of 8. Now this is compared to the exponential function because these are going to be inverses of each other. So thinking of this conceptually, we would write log of x base b would be equal to y. And we can use this information to solve problems. So say for instance that we're given something such as log base 3 of 27 is equal to y. Now looking at it this way, it's kind of hard to tell what it's asking for. So it's always easiest to then convert it in terms of what you would see as an exponent. Meaning that if we plug these values in, we'd have a number 3 multiplied y times would give us a value of 27. Meaning, how many times do we have to multiply 3 by so that we can get 27? So we can think of this in individual terms. We can go 3 times 3, which will give us a value of 9. Okay, well what if we multiply by another 3? 9 times 3 will give us 27. So it looks like we multiplied it 1, 2, 3 times, so our value of y is equal to 27. We can also spot check that. 3 raised to the third power is going to be equal to 3 times 3 times 3. That would be 9 times 3, which again is equal to 27. So our answer for this equation is going to be y is equal to 3. Now remembering that we have log base b of x is going to be equal to y. And then again, that b raised to the y power is going to be equal to x. How would we solve something such as log base 16 of 4 is equal to y? Meaning that if we have 16 raised to the y power is equal to 4. This is where we get into actually evaluating using log. We can take this log function, we can convert it into something like this, which is an exponential, to help us solve these problems. So to be able to solve this, we can think of this in terms of items with base 4. We know that 4 to the 1 is equal to 4, right? We know that 16 is equal to 4 to the second power. So if we take this equation right here, we can take it as 4 raised to the second power raised to y is equal to 4 to the 1 power. Well, that would tell us that we'd have 4 raised to the 2y is equal to 4 raised to the first power. So now what we can think of is 4 raised to the 2y is equal to 4 raised to 1, we can actually solve 2y is equal to 1. And if we do that, we get y is equal to 1 half. Meaning that if we have 16 raised to the 1 half power will give us an answer of 4. So our value for y is going to be 1 half. So this ties directly into the idea that we can use fractions to help us figure out and solve logarithmic equations. So if we have this right here, we have log base 4 of 1 over 256 is equal to y. We can think of this as 4 raised to the y power is going to be equal to 1 over 256. Going back to exponents, if you remember, if we have any sort of exponent that's a negative number, that tells us that we're actually going to have a fraction of that number with the exponent at the bottom. So 4 raised to the negative 2 power would be 1 over 4 raised to the second power. And if we simplify that, that would give us 1 over 16. 
So if we take the time to actually think of a value if it was raised to, say, the z power, how would we get 256? Well, we can think of how many times does it take us to multiply 4 by until we get to 256. So if we go 4 times 4 times 4, that's going to give us 16 times 4, which is going to be equal to 64. If we add on another 4, so 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, that's going to be 64 times 4, which will give us that value of 256. So we know that if we had this, it would give us 4 raised to the 4th power would be equal to 256. Now going back to our original one where we had it raised to the y, if we know that if it was just going to be a straight whole number, we would have four exponents. But since we have it over a fraction, we would know that this is going to be raised to the negative 4 power. And then that would be equal to 1 over 4 raised to the 4, which would give us that answer of 256. So our value for y is going to be equal to negative 4. So let's take a look at this word problem. The Richter scale for earthquakes measures intensity and is modeled by the equation that the magnitude of the earthquake is log base 10 of I, which is the intensity, divided by the reference intensity, which we use as 1. So the 1964 Alaskan earthquake had an intensity of this value. We can use log to figure out the magnitude of that earthquake. By plugging this in, we'd have magnitude is equal to log base 10 of that intensity, which is 158,489,319.2 over our reference one, which is going to be equal to 1. We can use a calculator to actually solve what this value is going to be. So our value for m is actually going to be equal to 9.2. So now looking at part two, how does that compare to something that has a magnitude of 3.1? So again, remember we actually can use that equation where we have our magnitude, which we denote here, is going to be m minus 1, and that will tell us what the intensity is. Well, if we know that the magnitude is going to be a 3, we would have 3 minus 1, which is going to be equal to 10 raised to the second power, which will give us 100. Now compare that to 158 million with some extra change to it, you can see that a magnitude of 3 using the Richter scale is much, much, much smaller than the 9.2 earthquake that hit Alaska. <laughs>